We often need to store files in our databases, right? But MongoDB is one such database that doesn't let you store any file larger than 16 MB in a normal document. Instead, MongoDB has a functionality specifically for storing large files and it goes by the name GridFS. Well, you heard it right. MongoDB becomes much more efficient when combined with GridFS. It divides a document into parts or basically we call them as chunks that are then stored as a separate documents. So in a nutshell, GridFS is a kind of file system used to store files in a smaller segments. On that note, hey everyone, welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. In today's session, we'll be discussing about GridFS in MongoDB, how it is used, what is its significance and how to uh, you know, add documents in smaller segments or in chunks by using GridFS method. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. Alright, so what is GridFS in MongoDB? GridFS is one of the powerful specifications of MongoDB that helps to store and retrieve large scale files. So it is a specification for storing and receiving files larger than 16 MB limit of base on documents. Now these files can be structured or unstructured and they include documents, audio files, images, recorded video clips, binary files, etc. Now GridFS is similar to a file system for the storage of files, but MongoDB collections are used for storage of data and files using GridFS which has powerful features to store the files of any format, including files that are even more than 16 MB in size. So in classical implementation, there is a file storage system of 16 MB, but MongoDB GridFS can store and retrieve files beyond this limit too. Now MongoDB GridFS features allow for the storage of large files as we discussed earlier. So in order to store very large files, it is not necessary to load the entire file into RAM. Instead, chunks of the files are steamed to the database. So these files can be again of any format. It can be an audio, PDF, movie, and then they are converted into smaller chunks and they are streamed into the database. So each chunk is limited to 255 KB in size. This means that the last chunk is normally either equal to or less than 255 KB. So it is the chunks are partitioned into smaller 255 KB files and when you read from GridFS, the driver reassembles all the chunks as per the user's requirement when they are needed. This means that you can read sections of a file as per your query range such as let's say listening to a segment of an audio file or you are trying to fetching a particular section of an image file. Now because as discussed earlier files are separated into smaller parts it is easier to access you know specific areas of a file which saves memory tasks such as loading the whole file. Now let us now understand why we use GridFS in MongoDB. So as discussed earlier in MongoDB, we use GridFS for storing files which is which are having you know size larger than 16 MB. So in some situ situations, storing large files may be more efficient in a MongoDB database than on a system level file system. And that is a reason we have uh, some reasons, right? A particular you know significance of using GridFS. One such reason is if your file system limits the number of files in the current directory in the Mongo database, you can use GridFS to store as many as files that are needed. Now the second reason is when you want to access information from portions of large files without having to load the files into the memory that is without calling the whole uh, you know data into the RAM, you can use GridFS to recall sections only of particular uh, you know specific sections of files without reading the entire file into the memory and finally if you want to store and sync files and metadata across distributed systems so when you want to keep your files and the data automatically synced and deployed across a number of systems and facilities you can basically use GridFS so MongoDB can distribute files and their metadata automatically to a number of MongoDB instances in the database so these are some of the reasons on why we use Data, uh, grid FS in MongoDB. So let us now move ahead and and understand how exactly you know GridFS works in MongoDB. Now GridFS stores files into two collections. Now these two collections are basically known as chunks and files. 
chunks basically stores the binary chunks and whereas the files store the files metadata. So if you look at this diagram uh, which we have uh, in our presentation that you are looking at, we have let's say a large file, it can be an audio, it can be a video file or anything. And let's say we have, we are dividing, we are using gridfs in order to, uh, you know, convert into a chunk of files. Now when you are basically converting into a chunk of file, it basically converts into file metadata and the a smaller segments of data which we call as chunks. So we have fs.files collection, fs.chunks collection. So basically gridfx stores files in two collections, right? Now it places the collection in a common bucket. So you can see we have fs bucket which comprises of fs.files and fs.collection. So it places the collection in a common bucket by prefixing each with the bucket name. So by default gridfs uses two collection as you can see which is fs.files and fs.collection you can choose a different bucket name as well as create multiple buckets in a single database now the full collection name which includes a bucket name is subjected to your requirement and your need and the need of the uh, file that you're working on so let us now understand what is gridfs chunks collection now the each document in the chunk collection represents a distinct chunk of a file which is a a smaller segment of the initial or the original file which represents a distinct chunk of a file as represented in grid effect so the syntax of is i wouldn't say it is uh, it has a syntax uh, the basically it stores the data in a format of id files id in and data so basically a document from the chunk collection contains these following fields now the chunk id it is basically the unique object id of the chunk now just like how when we store a data, it automatically creates a default ID in our MongoDB database. Similar for GridFS also, we have an ID that is being automatically generated. Next, we have the chunks.files ID. Now, this is basically the ID of the parent document as specified in the files document. Next, we have n. Now, chunks.n basically is a sequence number of the chunk that is being you know stored into the collection. Now, gridfs numbers have uh, chunk numbers starting with 0 and so on. And finally, we have chunk.data. It is basically, you know, the data that uh, it gives a different serial number to the data that we have inserted into our JSON document. Next, we have the gridfs chunks collection. Oh, sorry, there's a mistake. We have next gridfs files collection, right? Now we have discussed what is, you know, chunk collection. Now next we have the files collection. Now each document in the file collect represents a file in a gridfs. And similarly, just like uh, the chunk collection, we also have, you know, a format and different fields, uh, you know, when we try to store uh, collection, uh, gridfs, you know, collections in our database. So some of the fields that are, we, that are present in the collection are ID, length, chunk size, upload date, file name, content type, aliases, and metadata. So documents in the file collection contain uh, these following fields. Now, for example, the ID again, the, it is the unique identifier for this document and the ID of the data type chooses for the original document. Next, we have the length, which is basically the size of the document in bytes. Next, we have the chunk size, which is basically the size of each chunk in bytes. Now, basically, gridfs divides the document into chunk size of, uh, you know, as discussed earlier, it is default 255 KB each. Next, we also have upload date, which is the date the document was first stored by the gridfs. And next, we have the content type. It is basically uh, the type of, you know, file that you're basically adding to, uh, you know, database to store information related to the type of gridfs files. And we also have optional uh, field like aliases and we also finally have metadata which is an optional field which may be of any data type and can hold any additional information you want to store. So I hope you understood what is gridfs and what how it actually performs what are chunks and how it is dividing into sub you know segments like you know chunks and files. So let us now get into the direct execution part and see how it gets executed. Now, now, other than the theory of what, uh, you know, gridfs is, it is also important to understand how we can use gridfs to store large files. And you have to uh, remember that as the syntax is an important aspect of executing the gridfs in the MongoDB. So, the one thing that you have to remember is, uh, 
in order to query or to insert a file into gridfs it is not executed through mongodb shell guys but it instead of uh, you can use you know windows or linux or mac command prompt now before doing that also you need to basically download some you know mongodb database tools uh, which i'll be showing now so if you are using windows just uh, go to google and type mongodb database tools all right now when you scroll down a bit you'll have this you know download mongodb command line database tools click on that now after clicking that you will be you know redirected to another page which is basically the mongodb database tool documentation which will basically show everything about uh, you know various database tools that are available so on the left side you can see various database tools like mongo dump mongo store based on dump mongo import export and so on now we are concerned with mongo files which is the database tool which we are going to use in order to store you know data through uh, you know gridfs so just click on that and if you want to just go and understand what mongo files is you can just read it a bit uh, so just click on installation here it will redirect to the installation page now we have three options for linux mac os windows click on installing the database tools on windows and uh, So it will basically tell you what all to do here installation process it can be installed with an msi installer or download as a zip archive select the tablet depending on your desired installation method so we'll be basically using the msi installer only so open the mongodb download center here so i've already downloaded it on my system so i'm just basically showing you again what uh, on how you can install this click on download it's basically it shows the version again just install the latest version platform is windows and the package is a zip folder click on uh, download it will take some time based upon your uh, you know internet speed it will just take some time so wait for it now once you're done just extract the file now as you can see we have a folder which is uh, mongodb database tools and inside that you have a folder named bin open on that now as you can see we have the list of all database tools that we have you know downloaded successfully now we are only concerned with mongodb files right so just copy paste this and now what you have to do is go to the uh, c drive where mongodb is installed it is basically in program files click on program files search for mongodb click on server 6.0 and you will find the bin folder click on that and just basically paste the whole folder or the mongo files here so as you can see i've already pay uh, you know copy pasted the same in my uh, bin folder here so just click on that and again you will be redirected to bin here click on that again so you can see we have the list of all the uh, database tools that we have installed it on our system so this is basically the location where you have to uh, you know uh, copy uh, the entire files otherwise it will throw an error right so we have mongod mongo file successfully installed here let us now uh, try to understand how to insert a file you know with a simple example so you can see i have uh, you know a png file which is an image which is a uh, document one we also have a video file which is mp4 file which is mongodb replication it says right so let us now uh, try to insert into uh, our database for that just click on right right click in the same uh, folder you will find open in terminal click on that so it will open the windows partial this is where you have to write the uh, command prompt line all right so the above syntax the syntax that you have to uh, write for this is basically by using the put keyword which i'll be showing you now so we'll be just uh, experimenting with one simple example that i've ten with a simple image file that we are going to insert now uh, as you can see we don't have any specific collection for gridfs files but as we know mongodb has this feature of creating new collection when we insert a document into a non existing collection so the following query for inserting a file in gridfs unlike the insert operation where we'll insert file through mongo shell right here we'll use the again the window partial terminal now the query to insert a uh, data into our database is mention the mongo files mongo files is the keyword and after that put mention the file name now the file name that we have taken is document1 right so mention document1 dot and the file type which is of jpg 
So the above query is basically, this query is a standard format for inserting any file into GridFS. We have basically navigated the terminal to the location where Mongo files, which is a database tool, uh, is being saved. So our query begins with the keyword, which is Mongo files, followed by the storage option, which is put keyword, and it specifies the database where the file is to be stored. And here our database name is name is generally named as gridfs only and at the moment we don't have any database with such name but it will be created so let us just execute click on enter all right it is throwing an error oh. so as you can see it says we have an error here it says the command mongo files was not found but does exist in the current location windows partial does not load commands from the current location if you instead type Okay, now instead of typing Mongo files, uh, let's just copy this and see if it is working or not. Mongo files, again mention the keyword put and mention the document also. I mean the document name that we are trying to insert which is document1.jpg. Alright, let, let us now click on enter. I hope it should work now. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure why it is uh, throwing an error guys. So let's just take uh, another example. Uh, we also have MongoDB1 which is again a JPG file. Let us try to uh, add that. Now basically if you want to insert data, you have to store uh, the files in this bin folder only. Otherwise it will throw an error. So make sure you keep an eye on this because uh, you know adding huge amounts of data can take a lot of time. So if you are trying to uh, insert data which is not specifically in this folder then it will basically throw an error so make sure you keep an, uh, an eye on that so let's just uh, try to add another folder sorry another file dot uh, so the keyword is dot under sla uh, slash mongo files put uh, the file name is mongodb one dot jpg and semicolon so I'll click on enter well all right as you can see in the status it is connected to mongodb localhost and it has had it grid file mongodb1 and i think it is successful now so let's just go to uh, you know mongodb shell now and let us see whether or not it is created so just let's just go to uh, let's open mongodb shell so as you can see the shell has started so now in order to find uh, whether or not the gridfs file is created or not you have to use the db.fs.chunks.find command so we can see all the chunks present in the fx collection uh, by using this command so let's just try to find it so the command is db.fs.files.find so click on that so as you can see, it is retrieving the ID, length, chunk size, upload date, file name, and the metadata, which we have discussed in the earlier, uh, you know, in the presentation slide on what are the different fields that we get. So we can also see uh, the chunks present in the fs dot collection related to the stored file with the following code using the document ID in this, which is this uh, this object ID, right? So I'm going to use this and try to find how many number of chunks that it has created for this mongodb1.jpg file. So the command, the query is db.fs.chunks.find and inside that open the flower packets and mention the files id field which we are trying to find. Okay, mention colon and mention this uh you know object id that has created which is 639 and so on this right just copy paste that and copy it here and mention make sure it is in single quotes all right let us just close the brackets and the flower brackets as well There is an error. Sorry, I just put another square bracket. So 
so i'm not sure why it is showing but uh, in, in in most of the cases the query will return the number of documents that is the whole uh, you know mongodb onejpg file was divided into how many chunks of data like for example 20 30 and so on so in this way you can use gridfs to store large amounts of files which are more than 16 mb in size in your mongodb database now just to cross verify uh, go to mongodb compass and see how uh, the data in the uh, database has been created so you can see mongodb compass we have a test database that is uh, created and we have the fs.chunks. and fs.files which basically stores the appropriate information of the uh, date the data that we have uh, created in our database right so you can see in fs.chunks we have id files id n0 which basically uh, you know stores the data in a sequential manner like starting from 0 1 2 3 and so on and next in fs.files we also have id length chunk size upload date file name and metadata so that was pretty much all about gridfs and uh, mongodb i guess we have covered almost all the concepts now gridfs is basically a gift for developers who wants to store huge files in mongodb so if you are someone who is trying to uh, you know store data of audio files image files or videos files which is of more than 16 mb which is the threshold value of mongodb which is acceptable rate on upon which only you can use gridfs so in that case gridfs storage system allows developers to store big files and retrieve only a certain amount of uh, those files whenever needed and as a result gridfs is an outstanding mongodb features that can be used with variety of application which makes it an extremely useful tool for modern applications like a NoSQL database like MongoDB. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. Thank you for watching the video. If you found this tutorial informative and helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Stay tuned to the channel for more such amazing content and if you want to learn MongoDB concepts, we have a dedicated playlist on our channel so make sure you check them out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding.